Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to YouTube 101. In today's episode, I'm going to be going over basic Elgato setup. This series is brought to you courtesy of Elgato Gaming. They want me to make guides so that if you get one of these, you'll know how to use it better. And when I was at Call of Duty Championships recently, I got to see a lot of YouTubers, a lot of guys that use this literally every single day, have no idea how to set it up or how to use it, and you know I field your questions, so there's a lot of misconceptions and confusion about how to set up your Elgato. It's actually very simple, and we're going to do the physical setup right now. First things first, you will need the actual capture card, of course, the cables that it came with, and you will need to have the software installed on your computer, and if you open up the software with nothing plugged in, it'll more or less look like that. The console that you'll want to capture from, well you can capture from most any console, but today we're using the Xbox 360. Whoops. I just turned it on, didn't mean to do that, but it's pretty simple. Uh, your HDMI cable will probably already be plugged in the back, but if not, that's where it plugs in right there. And we have one HDMI cable, and this is what the console puts out. It's just the signal that the console sends out. This is the only thing you plug into the console, so that it sends a picture back to you wherever, whatever you're doing. The, oh, I have turned on my console, I touched it. The other end will go into the HDMI in portion of the Elgato. Jessica, if you wouldn't mind making sure that we get this. It's the side with this little circular thingy right here. Basically, you put your console input into the card. So now the video signal from the console is going straight to the capture card. From there, you will want to take another HDMI port and you will plug this in to the HDMI out. So this is the video signal that your capture card, if you can see the play button going that way, will send out to a television or monitor. Now I did not drag my entire television down here, otherwise I would be trying to do the commentary from like behind the TV. But this is the end you would plug into your TV, or to your monitor, or to whatever you play on. I can't plug it into the laptop, laptop's not HDMI in, it's HDMI out. So this goes into whatever you play on and you play off normal HDMI. Next thing you want to do is it'll come with a USB cable just like this and you will take the little end and plug it in right over here by the out and you can plug it in down here into the little you can see the USB slot make sure I get that Boop. there we go USB goes to the computer and I'm just gonna plug it in over here somewhere it should take any port and as you can see it says one moment please it's initializing initializing It'll take just about a second to boot up the card and all the processes, and we should have a video feed. Now, if I had a controller, it would be live. I could play with it. I can make this a little bit bigger, can't I? Oh, I don't care about your whatever action center messages. Uh, it's live. It's good to go. Now, this on the computer, this is not what you play off of. I want to make that very clear. You do not play on the computer screen at all. Uh, this is simply a little preview window for your capturing. You want to take the HDMI out that comes out of the play-in, you know, the, H the signal goes out, and put this into a new TV or a new monitor or somewhere and play on that monitor because there is a little bit of delay here and you cannot play on this. You have to have one extra cable to plug into anything else to play on that, but thankfully it does come with one cable. Now that that's done, we're going to swap over to the software setup, and I'm going to show you how to set up the software properly, but instead of doing that here in my kitchen, we're going to be doing it live on my computer. So now we're on my desktop PC, and I have my Elgato at home hooked up to my Xbox One here. I can kind of move around, and you can see that it's live. It's not a still image. And I just wanted to walk you through the general settings for making sure that you have good quality. First thing we'll do is we'll click the settings wheel in the top right, and we'll make sure that we have enable flashback recording. And if you want to do live commentary, like if you remember our live commentary tutorial, you can turn this on. But since I don't do it very often, mine in particular is off. Uh, in the sharing tab, you always want to convert new videos into the MP original, MP4 original format. If you choose MP4 1080p, that sometimes stretches it. And again, if you're doing a live commentary, you can turn these on as well, which is very nice. The updates tab, automatically update, that's fine. Uh, this is all good. This is where you would change your recording folder. Mine is for the resilience perk. That's what I was working on last. So I can I didn't change anything. I'll just hit cancel. One of the other things you can change is right below it when it has said 
the, the device section here you can click on the hammer and wrench and it'll open up some options I'm recording on an Xbox one so I have the Xbox one selected if I were on a different console I would select whichever console that I wanted my inputs HDMI I, I take the standard color range you can go expanded if you want to but uh, you know what, I'll just do expanded, it doesn't make much difference, uh, but I gotta put it back on standard, I'll not change up what I'm doing. The profile is 1080p, I have it on best quality, preserve source format, and stretch standard definition input. I normally don't stretch things, but I found that to actually be useful if your input's a little bit funny. I didn't change any of my picture settings, audio, profiles, or anything in the advanced. It was just more or less good to go. Now this you can do if your TV is too bright or too dark or it just has a different picture after passing through the Elgato. You can grab this and slide it around. I generally just found that 9 is where mine should be and I left it there. And that's kind of all you need to do to set up to capture. If you were doing other things like live commentary, you should refer to that tutorial down here for these options for capturing a live commentary. And the most useful thing I found is the flashback recording. Now I'm going to move around a little bit on purpose so that my screen will move and do some things. It comes through just a little bit delayed on the Elgato. We've discussed that already. But let's say for whatever reason I just wanted to record browsing around on the Xbox dashboard. The last thing we want to cover is flashback recording. You don't have to hit this button to start recording. It's automatically recording as soon as this time is starting what you want to do to trim a clip is you can click your button here and you can kind of drag it back and you can kind of see that I'm going backwards in time and doing different things uh, I will drag it back to about where we started and I would hit it once and it'll go back to the future or to the present now and then you can drag it back again and kind of pick where the action ended which is about here and you click it again and that tells your Elgato to trim the clip. There is no need to have it always recording. There's no need to have this button always orange. There is no need to disable the flashback and start stop every match. You plug it in, it'll record on its own. You play and when you get a good game or you get a good segment, you use the flashback feature here to drag back and change it however it is that you want it. That's all for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe, and check out Elgato Gaming, which is linked down there in the description. Drifter out.